Hello everyone, and welcome to my video on Doctor Who, The Rings of Ackerton. I think I said that right anyway, it's a weird word, I'm not really sure how to pronounce it. But, anyway, on to the episode. It was a good episode, I enjoyed it. it. I don't think it's going to be one of the more memorable episodes. It's not like Impossible Astronaut or End of Time. It's none of those sort of episodes. It is It is what it's supposed to be, and that is the sort of the Doctor's proving ground of an episode. That's where he's got to like show this new companion what his world is all about. And it's a very simple world, a very enjoyable world. I'm sure we know by now, he travels to distant lands, saves planets, destroys planets, does what he needs to do. Because, you know, at the end of the day, he is the Doctor. And he does it, he show, he successfully shows Clara what he's all about. Because, you know, the first episode, that's just the sort of introduction of everything. That's just they meet, and then he invites her to come travelling with him. This episode is really the meat of it, where she gets properly introduced to the TARDIS, how he can travel through time and space and dimensions and all of that. Whatever he wants to do, he can do it. And it's just a really good way of, basically... Yeah, it's one of the best proving episodes I've seen for a while because, like, Amy Pine, she got the Beast Below on Flagship UK and all that, but that wasn't really that good an episode. It, sh it did what it needed to do, but it wasn't, again, it wasn't a memorable episode. These episodes never really are, but they are good episodes nonetheless, and they're always well written, and I always like the unusual concepts of it. And this one I really liked because of the currency on this, uh, like, market, religion, temple place, wherever they are. And, you know, that is, you know, Sarah sentimental possessions are currency. You give something that means something to you, and that is their currency. And that, that's clever. It's, you know, well thought out. Simple, but gets the job done. And it's just a little twist on life as we know it. So that's a good thing to see. And, you know, I noticed that keeping Matt, changing Matt Smith's outfit, uh, again, he's, you know, he's still going with the whole bow tie, so on motif, but he's no longer in the, like, brown tweed and everything with, you know, the the boot and the shoulder pads. It's, uh, you know, very similar to what we used to, but he's moving away from it again, and it's a darker colours as well, which I think is showing the fact he's still sort of in grief about the fact he's lost Amy and Rory, which is fair enough, and I'm not going to complain of that. I mean, tenant sh change suits, Eccleston change jumpers, so, you know, we do what we do. And, uh, yeah, so, another thing I liked about the episode, and I have to be said, is, uh, are they keep referring back to the screwdriver? Because the screwdriver, let's face it, look at it, it's a beautiful thing. The screwdriver is, you know, an integral part of Doctor Who. It is, you know, it's as important as the TARDIS, it's as important as the Doctor himself. The Doctor is not the Doctor without the screwdriver. Even though it's taken many forms over the years, it is still the sonic screwdriver. And he's successfully brought across just how important that is to him. And it is one of the only things he owns in this world when Clara keeps asking him, you know, doesn't he have anything to pay? He's got this, and that's it. He's got this and the TARDIS, everything else, nothing. Which, you know, that it shows him. He's like the lonely god, as, uh, what is it, Novice Hain? Yeah, Novice Hain refers to him in New Earth with the face of Burn and everything. He's the lonely god. And, you know, which I always like these episode episodes when they refer to the sobering religion and stuff into it. And they say, oh, he's a god, he's a this, he's a that. And you know, so the Doctor could just walk in and be like, nope, I'm, I'm the only god, really. I'm as close to one as you get to get. Proved in the Satan pit, proved in again now. Sorted. Uh, so, yep, yeah, you know, if you're watching this video, and obviously, and you want to leave what you thought of the episode, please just leave a comment below. As, you know, I like chatting about this sort of stuff, because Doctor Who is one of my favourite things and everything. And one of those things, I know for a fact, everyone has lots of opinions about, theories about where they're going to take it. I didn't see Richard E. Grant make an appearance in this episode. You might have, I didn't, unless I missed something because I was blind, but yeah, because obviously he's coming into it now, he seems to be the underlying force in this, like Bad Wolf or the Cracks in Time, he seems to be what is going through alongside this Clara Oswin Oswald story. So we're going to see where that carries us, and uh, no doubt Stephen Moffat and the other writers, they all have their own little agenda on the side, which is what's carrying on through this. But anyway, as I've said, and you know, the final verdict for The Rings of Akaton, the Doctor Who episode, is it is a good episode, but it is not by no stretch a memorable, really good episode. It is, you know, it is what it is, it is the Doctor's proving episode, and I enjoyed it. I'm sure plenty of other people up and down the country I've enjoyed it too, so there we go. Uh, my next video will be coming out 
probably the same time next week when the next Doctor Who episode comes out. So until then, thank you.